The Buddhas are always thinking about us. They are mindful of us. But we living beings aren't mindful of the Buddhas. We may happen to study a little of the Buddhist Dharma, but we're not very clear about what's being said. The Dharma is really wonderful, we say but we don't realize how wonderful it actually is. Why are the Buddhas mindful of us? It is because they see that all living beings share the same essence. The Buddhas regard all beings as their fathers and mothers of the past and as the Buddhas of the future. The Buddha Sakyamuni said that all beings are endowed with the Buddha nature and all of them can become Buddhas. There's not a single being who cannot become a Buddha. It is this very point that makes the Buddhist teachings the most lofty and all-encompassing. It is why the Buddha Sakyamuni taught that we should abstain from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, false speech, and intoxicants. These are the five fundamental Buddhist precepts, and to keep these precepts is a way of showing one's regard for all beings. Since the Buddha sees all beings as identical in essence to himself, he wishes to teach them how to change so that they can become Buddhas themselves. We come into this world and ignore what is fundamental while craving what is superficial. We turn our backs on enlightenment and cleave to the mundane objects of the senses. That is why we forget the Buddhas and never remember to be mindful of them. There are several ways to practice mindfulness of the Buddha. You can be mindful of the Buddha by reciting his name. You can recite the name of whichever Buddha you choose. You can recite Namo Buddha Amitabha, or you can recite Namo Buddha Sakyamuni, our first teacher. Or maybe you'll want to recite Namo Master Healer, the Buddha who dispels disaster and lengthens life. No matter which Buddha it is whose name you choose to recite, the practice is the same. Your goal is to dispense with all extraneous thoughts and to consolidate your thoughts into the one mindful thought of the Buddha. If you don't have extraneous thoughts, you won't have any evil thoughts. And when nothing evil is arising in your mind, you're on the road to goodness. You can practice mindfulness of the Buddha Amitabha by visualizing him. You can consider the ray of white light that shines from between the Buddha's eyebrows. A hymn in his praise includes the lines, The light of his brow shines five times as high as Mount Sumeru. His clear and pure eyes are as wide as the sea. Are you able to visualize that? If the scope of your mind is small, your concept of the Buddha will be fairly limited as you contemplate him. If the scope of your mind is vast, your conception of him can be monumental. You can practice mindfulness of the Buddha by contemplating an image. In this practice, you gaze upon an image of the Buddha Amitabha while you recite his name. As you are mindful of him, you reflect upon his magnificent appearance adorned with hallmarks. You can practice mindfulness of the Buddha in terms of his true attributes. This is the practice of meditation in stillness. You pursue the question, Who is this who is mindful of the Buddha? The sutras tell us that in this time of the Dharma's ending, not one person in a million will reach the goal of his or her practice unless that practice involves mindfulness of the Buddha. Only then will people be able to reach enlightenment. This practice of reciting the Buddha's name is very easy. It allows us to escape the three realms by a side door. 